dear friends ladies and gentlemen the next video lecture is on laparoscopic tissue approximation next slide during laparoscopy we are exposed to 2d image there is no depth perception there is no tactile feedback with this disadvantage sometimes it is very difficult to perform laparoscopic suturing it is both humiliating and frustrating to be observed by every one in or when we take more than 15 minutes just to do a one square knot this is the comment by nathaniel soper surgical clinics of north america october 92 next slide so before we go for tissue approximation principles let us understand the importance of working knowledge of suturing equipments ergonomics of suturing and various types of tissue approximation AGS have special suturing and knotting course where we give the trainers various tips to master the art of suturing it is only by practice practice and practice one can get good at suturing so that one can move from basic surgery to more advanced laparoscopic surgery in the part 1 let us see various equipments required for laparoscopic suturing we need a good pair of needle holders knot pushers and appropriate suture materials and in addition we should have a good high definition camera with a monitor 30 degree telescope and of course a good camera assistant next slide we should invest on a good needle holders the tip should be of tungsten carbide with a diamond coating and they should be in line straight or a slightly curved needle holders next slide there are basically two types of needle holders from the functional point of view the active hand needle holder or right hand needle holder and assisting hand or a passive needle holder on our left hand some people prefer a needle holder on the right hand and a non toothed grasper without rasher in the left hand or even a curved dissector next slide similarly the knot pushers are of various types one should be well versed how to use each and every knot pusher and rotor knot melzer knot are the two important knots one should know how to put them and train your staffs also to quickly make the knots for you during the surgery next slide there are some additional gadgets available like self writing needle holder endo stitch equipment the endo stitch equipment the needle swings from one jaw to the other jaw there is no time wasted by instrument or needle exchange and this makes the suturing very elegant and easy to perform as in this video demonstrating the repair of hiatus using endo stitch next slide coming to the suture material we should consider three important aspects the observability strength tissue reaction and the handling characteristics and visibility of the suture material one has to consider and we should select the suture material like for example as far as the absorbable suture materials are concerned we should go for vicryl catgut pds these are the three common suture materials used in laparoscopy and ethibond and proline sutures are the common non absorbable sutures coming to the length of the suture materials for intracorporeal suturing we should have an optimum length of about 10 to 12 cm whereas for extracorporeal suture we should have a suture length of about 70 cm next slide coming to the type of the suture needle the needles are basically for laparoscopy either could be straight needle or slightly bent tip like a ski needle or a curved needle usually a 25 mm half circle needle is the preferred one these days next slide coming to the ergonomics of suturing next slide open surgery is very fast and open surgery suturing is also very simple to master and ergonomic principles are optional whereas coming to the laparoscopic suturing which is very slow and steady process because of the magnification effect and also the 
lack of depth perception we may be having difficulty in learning the art but we should know the importance of the choreography of the movements and the importance of the triangulation and achieving the right 60 degree manipulation angle which all makes a difference between a difficult and easy suturing so laparoscopic suturing is a different ball game altogether next slide so we should adhere to the all these six common ergonomic principles namely straight line principle with both optical and also the motor axis in line that is coaxial in most of the situations achieve a triangulation between the right and left hand instruments and the optics and get the manipulation angle of around 60 to 90 degrees with equal azimuth angle and we should aim for elevation angle of around 60 degrees and the table should be low enough so that you are comfortable in a physiological position and also your neck is not strained so keep the monitor a little lower down so that you should have a gaze down view next slide this picture clearly demonstrates as in a case of a gallbladder surgery the importance of straight line principle with the surgeon camera pathology and monitor they all form a straight line and also the right and left hand dissection port with the camera or optical port forms a triangle and with the operating area included the whole area is like a baseball diamond next slide a manipulation angle is very important like it's like eating the food from a plate how we hold the knife and fork that is the manipulation angle similar angle if you maintain during even live surgery the surgery will become very simple to perform azimuth angle of 30 to 45 degree and a manipulation angle of 60 to 90 degree is a preferred angle for efficient laparoscopic suturing next slide a manipulation angle is very important like it's like eating the food from a plate how we hold the knife and fork that is the manipulation angle similar angle if you maintain during even live surgery the surgery will become very simple to perform azimuth angle of 30 to 45 degree and a manipulation angle of 60 to 90 degree is a preferred angle for efficient laparoscopic suturing next slide and we should also understand the importance of having the right amount of movements at the tip of our hand instruments laparoscopic conventional instruments have four different movements but robotic equipments are different they are more efficient because they have a wrist like movements with the seven different degrees of movements as you can see in this picture a da vinci rob robo with wrist like action hand instruments so they are able to precisely do the suturing even in a difficult awkward situations next slide the length of the hand instrument soft also is very important thing to consider usual average adult instruments are about 30 cm long but for pediatric people one may have to go for a shorter version and for bariatric surgery in obese patient one may have to go for a extra long hand instruments like 45 cm so that we can adhere to the pulcrum effect or pulcrum principle next slide as you can see in this picture when the hand instruments enter the trocar 50% of the trocar i mean the hand instrument is outside and 50% is inside the patient's abdominal wall through the trocar and and at the tissue so when we move the hand instruments 1 cm outside and similar range of movement happens inside so if there is a 1 to 1 movement so we are very comfortable performing the procedure say for example in a pediatric patient if the instrument is unduly long and the larger part of the equipment is outside the patient's abdominal cavity then we need to have a wider range of hand instrument movement in order to achieve working ends movement inside the patient's abdominal cavity so it will be like 2 is to 1 hand instrument movement in order to achieve 
working ends movement inside the patient's abdominal cavity. So it will be like 2 is to 1. And handle design is also important as we can see in suturing instruments also like ergonomic handles as far as the needle holders are concerned like instead of pistol grip go for a thumb grip or inline grip with the ergonomic design is very very important and we should have the uh, switches or keys in the right place so that they can be operable with the thumb pressure comfortably next slide the surgeon's stance is also important and the table should be low enough and we should have a gaze down view and a low table so that it is an ideal relaxed stature if the table is unduly in a higher position or if the monitor is high up so that we need to extend our neck and have a gaze up view it is a very very tiring to your body and we can't perform difficult suturing in this posture next slide so the ideal relaxed position is what this surgeon is adapting to that is waistline table gaze down view straight line principle and triangulation straight head in the axis of the trunk without rotation or extension of the cervical spine shoulders in a relaxed and neutral position arms alongside the body elbows bent to 70 to 90 degrees forearms in an horizontal or slightly descending axis hands pronated that is physiological resting position and hands and fingers are lightly gripping the handles so if we adopt this ideal relaxed posture it makes the laparoscopic suturing very comfortable task to perform next slide coming to the various types of suturing let us move on to intracorporeal suturing next slide I can recognize a good surgeon not from how he cuts but from how he sues that's the word of wisdom from Johann Mikulik Redicki a very famous endoscopic surgeon from Poland next slide the four critical steps of suturing are the introduction of the needle grasping the needle tissue penetration and a knotting we'll go one by one next slide introduction of the needle the needle can be introduced through 10 mm ports usually from the non-dominant hand port so when the needle enters it is ready to be picked up by the the right hand dominant port or we can take the needle even through the 5 mm port what we should do is take the trocar outside and reverse roll load the needle by holding the suture about one or two centimeter from the needle then push the needle holder followed by pushing the trocar through the same incision in a thin abdominal wall as in pediatric we can pass the needle directly through the anterior abdominal wall next slide grasping the needle the needle once it enters in the inside the abdomen it should be grasped by the right head dominant needle holder and we should grasp with the tip of the needle holder at the sweet spot that is outer one third and inner two third we should adapt one of the three techniques for uh, grasping the needle either a deposit and pickup technique wherein the needle is deposited over a flat surface like a bowel or momentum and we can go and pick up with our right hand needle holder or a dangling needle technique wherein the needle is dangling because it is held by the non-dominant hand instruments and so that we can swing the needle on either direction and then we can aid the dominant hand port needle holder to go and catch the needle in the right place nudging is another small technique where we can just hold the needle with a needle holder and adjust the tip by bringing the assisting hand instruments and just push or turn the needle tip to appropriate direction 
So all these small tricks we should practice every day. Initially in the lab trainer, later we can apply those principles when we actually perform the suturing. Next slide. As you can see in this video, the needle is dangling and is held and always a held needle should be in view. A trailing needle is safe whereas held needle can cause any injury so it should be always under view. The camera person should be very well aware of this uh, needle principle. There are various types of knot one should practice like square knot, slip knot, changing into square knot, surgeon's knot and also occasionally one has to master and do a buddy knot, dandy jamming slip knot. Let us see one by one. Next slide. We should adapt Sabo's suturing principles when we perform a surgeon's knot. We should take the needle and have 90 degree perpendicular tissue penetration and take the needle through the other side with a counter traction slowly pull the thread so that there is no cutting through of the tissue then create a C with a small tail at around 1 o'clock position and place the assistant or a passive needle holder over the C loop then make an over wrap once or twice then catch the tip of the tail and put, pull the tail towards around 7 or 8 o'clock position and keep the tail around 10 o'clock now then make a reverse C then go for again another overlap go and catch the tip of the tail and bring the tail to the opposite direction and again you make another C now the tail is again at 1 o'clock position catch the tip of the tail after over wrapping and complete the suture so each and every step how the C and river C is made where the tail is in the step number 1, 2 and 3 and how you do over wrapping and how the needle holder becomes an active and passive needle holder all these principles have to be adhered to for a very smooth and successful suturing. Next slide. The guidelines for suturings are as follows. We should understand the active and passive role of needle holders. We should know the importance of the initial C and tail. We should use the natural bias of the thread to our advantage. We should learn the choreographic movements with the needle holders and there should not be any undue unnecessary movements with the needle holders there should be some economy of motion the execution of knots should be always done on the tissue surface so even with the small 4 or 3 centimeter suture material we should be able to perform the suturing and we should be practicing ourselves for becoming ampidextrous so both our right and left hands work efficiently well next slide and also we should know the way of changing a slip knot to square knot after the two throws we should catch hold of the thread below the knot and above the knot and pull on either direction so that convert the square knot to slip knot then we slide with the merlin or a needle holder so this knot can very easily slide and become very tight once it's done then we can catch hold of the tail and pull in the other direction so that again making the slip knot to square knot and uh, complete the whole procedure by making another throw on the opposite direction so this is very important simple technique which may be of immense use especially when you are bringing two ends of the bowel or crust of the diaphragm under tension. Uh, making a slip knot to qu square knot is a very important technique one can adapt in such situations. Next slide. Continuous suturing. Continuous suturing like 
anastomosis of the bowel or close of the peritoneal flaps it needs attraction of the thread with the right hand and then go for the tissue penetration on both sides and take the needle through the tissue either you can lock or unlock and there should be equal distance between the sutures and there should be uniform distribution of tension so and also we should know how to finish the whole suturing at the end by making either Aberdeen's suturing or simple square knot we should always know the importance of C, reverse C, where the tail is and how we overwrap and how close we are to the tissue to perform this art of suturing. Next slide. So for laparoscopic bubble anastomosis, the following key points are important to adhere to. The port positioning should be in such a way that even if case of uh, stapling, there should not be any difficulty. There should be a good communication with your camera person all the time, zoom in and zoom out like that. And the position of the suturing, especially at the corners, one should be very careful. And we should remember that everything is magnified so we should be carefully space the suture materials like bowel anastomosis they should be around 4 to 5 millimeter distance between the sutures and there should be equal tension in the suturing that should not be undue slackness or too much of tightening of the sutures so we need to adhere to all these principles for a good laparoscopic bowel anastomosis next slide let us go on to the extracorporeal suturing. Next slide. There are basically three important extracorporeal knots one has to learn, namely rotor knot, Melzer's knot, taste side knot. Coming to the rotor knot, which is one of the commonest knot we perform when we do appendicectomy, you can practice with a, a thread and here we make a one off knot with a long standing part and a tail then we go around three times three rounds around both the limbs then we complete by making a hitching half knot then we st stack and slide on to the long thread and after practicing it in the thread several times we could do the same in the knot pusher using a number two chromic cat gut and this is one of the commonest knot we apply for appendix base next slide and also we should know how to make an extra corporeal rotor knot also when we go around the tubular structures like cystic artery or cystic duct and we should seal the hole in the chokar by putting a finger there and able to make the off knot three throws and a hitching knot and then tightening the whole thing and pushing with the ha pusher and while we are pushing the knot inside we should make sure that should not be undue tension at the cystic artery or duct so that there is no avulsion at that site and once the knot is tightened we should know to divide the suture material safely. Next slide. Melzer's knot. The Melzer's knot is slightly different that instead of one half knot we are taking two hitches then three rounds around the loop then we complete it by having two half locking hitches around one side of the thread. We do this by using either 10 or 20 vicryl and it is typically for cystic duct Melzer's knot next slide Tayside knot is used with PDS number 
1 0 or 2 0 expressly to ligate the azygous vein in laparoscopic esophagectomy here you make a half knot then you make four and a half turn around the long standing part of the thread the other direction then you complete it with by passing the tail through the second and the third loop in order to lock the knot next slide tail side knot is used with PDS number 10 or 20 expressly to ligate the azygous vein in laparoscopic esophagectomy here you make a half knot then you make four and a half turn around the long standing part of the thread the other direction then you complete it with by passing the tail through the second and the third loop in order to lock the knot next slide coming to the role of staplers in laparoscopy next slide staplers made advanced laparoscopic surgery possible like say for example sleeve gastrectomy and uh, roux and white gastric bypass and also the low anterior resection by end to end circular stapler so there are various types of staplers available like a linear staplers circular staplers and they are all color coded in such a way like white blue gold color green the white normally is reserved for vascular stapling or mesentery or small gut and a blue or gold used for stomach exit pylorus and green is used for pylorus or redo surgeries next slide and when we use staple and do the anastomosis the following six important guidelines to be considered that is a port positioning size of the ports we may often require 12 millimeter ports for uh, getting the stapler inside stay switches for tensioning and positioning the staples endrotomy positioning and size positioning and angulation of the stapler prior to closure checking the staping staple line to make sure there is no undue bleeding and complete the closure of the residual opening by single or a double layer interrupted or continuous suturing using either vicryl or a silk next slide so it is not the practice that makes perfect it is a perfect practice that makes perfect that is the word of wisdom from Vince Lombardi the American football coach Green Bay Vincosin so ladies and gentlemen with the constant practice on the good principles of laparoscopic suturing initially in the lab trainer in the presence of seniors and mentors we should learn the art of laparoscopic suturing and apply it in every day laparoscopic surgery like hernia colectomy bariatric surgery then leap from basic surgery to more advanced surgery in our career good luck thank you very much